All right, hey everybody, it's Ed O'Keefe and welcome to the Ed O'Keefe Show. Today I have a really special guest, Mr. Ken Hardison. Ken is a multiple time top selling author as well as the, a founder of PILMA, Personal Injury Lawyers Marketing and Management Association. Um, what Ken is pretty amazing is that what Ken's discovered and created over the last 30 something years is how uh, personal injury lawyers can get cases on autopilot and 2x, 3x, and even in some cases, 10x their uh, firms uh, using marketing systems and scaling systems. Now, I'm super excited because uh, before we were on, uh, on film, Ken was walking me through how his clients will come to him doing a million a year and a matter of a couple years be up beyond 10 million a year. So, uh, Ken, it's so great having you on the show. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure. Uh, why don't you tell everybody a little bit of your backstory, like how did you first of all get into law and then how did that evolve into uh, building and selling multiple uh, firms? Yeah, so I was raised very, very poor uh, and I wanted, I, I found out very quickly that I did not like working for other people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, the girlfriend I had at the time was babysitting this lawyer and I would go over after I got off work and sit with her and he would come back in and uh, I talked to him about what he was doing and how he was helping people and the kind of money. He was driving a Mercedes, he lived in a big house, you know, he wore nice clothes, he seemed like people respected him in the community. And I said, that's what I want to do because I want to own my own business, I want to help people and I want to make money. And so uh, I took that journey, went to law school, worked my way through uh, on my own dime and uh, got out, worked with a personal injury law firm for less than a year, then wow. went, went out and started my own practice because uh, I don't like working for other people, right? Yeah. And uh, had a, created a pretty good, joined another firm, the oldest firm in town that I lived in North Carolina, and kept building the practice up, you know, steadily over, you know, 5% a year, just doing a good job, you know, learning and doing a better job. And then in about 92, 93, I noticed everything kind of doing like this. Yeah. Kind of plateauing. And I said, what's going on? And I couldn't figure it out. Because the only advertising we did was just yellow pages and just one half ad, ad page. And we were doing all right. I mean, I was making a, probably net in a couple hundred thousand a year. I mean, I was making, I mean, I was making a great living. But then things started going down in 94, 95. And I did a little bit of criminal law and personal injury law. And I went to court one day to represent this gentleman on a DWI. <clears throat> he walked in the courthouse with crutches. And I said, what happened, Joe? He said, well, I got T-boned by this transfer truck. I said, well, you know I do that. He said, yeah, but I saw this guy on TV. Oh, wow. I said, I'll hire him. Yeah. And so, you know, I just kind of hung my head. I walked over. We tried the DWI. I won it. I drove back to the office. I said, we got to have a meeting. And I said, we've got to start marketing. And they didn't agree with me. And your, your, your staff, your my, team, my, my your partner, partners. Got partners. Yeah, my yeah, partners. Yeah. yeah, because in a lot of times with with uh, lawyers or you're, you're indoctrinated in school that uh, you're, you're not allowed to advertise or promote. It's unprofessional. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay, keep going, that's yeah. great. No. And so I said, well, you know, we gotta pivot, we gotta change. I said, we gotta change with the times. I don't like it either. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, you know, but if they're gonna do it, we gotta do it. That's right. And so we had this conversation for about a year, didn't work out, I left, started my own firm, and I went out and went to everything I could to learn from from the gurus about marketing in general. And I, I, I tried everything in the world. Half of it worked, half of it didn't. And the stuff that worked, I spent a lot of money on it. Yeah. So I did TV, did a lot of grassroots marketing, uh, a lot of referral systems. And we took it, I had two lawyers and three staff in 96. In 2001, I had 13 lawyers, 47 staff. Wow. Yeah, so we were doing a half a million, eight million. Wow. So yeah. And I made, I made a lot of mistakes believe yeah. me. during those five years. I made every mistake a man can make, but I learned a lot too. Yeah. And uh, when I learned something worked, I poured the, you know, poured fuel the on the fire. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I want to, I want to bring you back to, so when you ran into somebody who knew you, but they didn't hire you, I think it brings up one of the other biggest misconceptions when growing a practice in a firm is that, Hey, if I get my name out there, then people are just going to hire me. Yeah. So they, they default to brand marketing, image stuff, when, when we know that's not really the case. Yeah. Our job is to get their names in here. 
Yeah, you want to build a fence around them, you know, mm-hmm. and let and what you want to do, and I learned that the hard way. Yeah, is you want to put a fence around them, and and you want to be to where they think of you as their trusted legal advisor. So no matter what it is, whether it be a DWI, a car wreck, you know, a a, a, a divorce. Even if you don't do this stuff, you want them to come to you first, because number one, you don't want them guessing whether you do this or not. And number two is you can get referral fees, right? So, and if you don't get referral fees, you can refer out these cases and build goodwill with the divorce lawyers and the criminal lawyers so that they'll send you cases where you can pay them referral fees. That's right. So it's a, you, you, but you've got to put but, that, yeah. that fence around your client, your past clients and, and all your friends and family. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. So, you, what did you end up doing with that practice? Because I know you did. You end up selling that I practice. I sold it. Yeah, I got a 2010, and I just woke up one morning and I said, "I'm not excited about this anymore. Um, I like building things, but once I get them built, I get bored." I'm yeah. Right it's, it's an entrepreneur thing. So I sold <laughs> the business. I was going. I moved down from Raleigh to Myrtle Beach. We're going to retire. Lawyers calling me day in and day out. How'd you do this? How'd you grow so fast? We want to know your secrets. And so I started this personal injury lawyers marketing management association. Yeah. And I, I was doing a mastermind, and we had lawyers uh, that would come and meet two or three times a year, and we'd share what's working, what won't work, and I would facilitate them. And we would see a lot of rapid growth in these law firms because they were shortcutting their learning. That's stage. right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they were saving money. Not what I did from '96 to 2001. I could have grew. Probably 30% faster and save probably an extra half a million dollars. That's right. If I'd been in a mastermind. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we didn't have those, did Yeah. Well, you know, you're we talking on ca- off camera. It's like the guy, the guy who is uh, trying to brute force everything, making every imaginable mistake, is growing, but he has no profit, no cash flow. Yeah. He's like the person sitting in the cornfield with like a map from the 60s, whereas he looks over and sees everyone on the highway flying by him. And they're they're younger, they're up to speed with technology. Yeah. Well, those are the guys plugged into the yeah. to the group. Now you told me, I just want you to share one story, and then I'll talk about a couple of your clients. But you told me that somebody who challenged you uh, to uh, see how fast you can grow a practice. This yeah. is after you'd already sold off. They're like, well, you yeah. know, Ken, you you say you could do this, but it costs all this money, and they challenge you. So, do you mind sharing that story? Yeah, you know, part of the deal was when I decided to really go full steam, I went out and mortgaged everything I had and borrowed a half a million dollars and went on TV. And that was a big game changer. Uh, not saying that I'm saying that's what you ought to do today, but back then it was what you needed to do. We didn't have a lot of internet. Uh, that was with your first practice. My first that, practice. Yeah, that grew up, yeah, okay. So I was speaking at an event, one of my events that we put on every year in May down in New Orleans. And I always said, well, you know, this is fine, but I, I, couldn't, I couldn't borrow, you know, $50,000. So how am I supposed to build a practice? I said, well, what could you build a practice with? He said, realistically, five, six thousand dollars a month for marketing. I said, it could be done. He said, I just don't believe it. So I went home and I started Carolina Disability Lawyers in Myrtle Beach. And, it, I, I, and I said, even though I had the money to spend more, I only spent six thousand dollars a month on marketing. Did a hell of a lot of grassroots marketing. And in two years I had it 800 cases. And I proved to myself I could do it. Okay, so let's say that again. So in two years, with 6000 a month marketing budget, you had 800 cases. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And so I sold it because I didn't want to do that. I just I, You just wanted to prove the I point. I just wanted to prove the point. To, <laughs> uh, actually, could, probably more to myself yeah, than, yeah, than yeah. to him. Yeah, you know that I could I still mean? make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. So that was, that, was, that, was, that was the deal. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I proved it can be done. Now, did I work hard? Yeah. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Well, if you ask for a lot in life, you got to, you, you know, it's, it's nothing comes free and it's yeah. not a handout. So, well, so over the last 16 years, you've helped, you know, thousands of different firms grow. Yeah. You run a group that specifically helps them two to three X their, their, their firms. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, would you mind sharing a little bit about like why you got into teaching and why you actually like working with practices and watching them interact? Yeah, well... You know, I've always been one that liked to help people. Uh, I think that's why I got into personal injury law, because I really like helping the underdog, the person that can't figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but it, this gives me purpose. What I'm saying is, uh, 
Sure, I like money, but I don't do this. My number one reason is not doing this. My number one reason for doing this is to help, give it the help that I wish I'd had when I was growing mine. Even though I did a great job. I'm not, I mean, right. I'm not bragging, but I did. But it, it's because I worked 100 hour weeks and, and wasted two or three hundred thousand dollars. Right. You know, I want people not have to do that. Yeah. You know, that's why they can do it now in two years where it took me five years. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I do. It gives me purpose. I like to get up in the morning and have purpose because I think if you don't, I think that you, you, you end up dying. Well, yeah, all the wealth in the world can't uh, replenish the cup that has no purpose or a reason, right? Yeah. We were t uh, so, could you mind sharing a, um, an example or two of a, a client that, maybe two different types of clients, one that is over 10 million and one that's just starting out that you helped grow to multiple millions? Yeah, so there was a guy, uh, and it's in my book. Uh, yeah, which? Yeah, the. Uh, I got, I got, I got like four effect. books here. Yeah, yeah, there's so many good ones, yeah. And uh, uh, Matt Dubin from Seattle, uh, he joined us in 2012. He had 60 cases and two staff. Uh, today he has uh, 33 people, eight lawyers. Wow. And back then he was doing two or three hundred thousand dollars a year, now he's doing uh, eight to ten million. Wow! Wow! Yeah, he's, yeah. he's killing it. And and uh, listen, it won't all Pilma. He he did the work. Yeah. But he said he could have never done it without Pilma because it gives him the knowledge, and the encouragement, uh, you know, and seeing other people that were in the masterminds that had done it. Yeah. It could be done. Yeah. 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 And what about another example? Yeah, like uh, we had one lawyer that was doing very well. Actually, I got two, but. Let's go with one, uh, Burt Parnall in, in, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, was doing really well, and he might not want me to say, but he was doing well in the seven figures, very healthy. And in five years, he quadrupled that. Wow. Yeah, in five years. And listen, very smart lawyer, doing a great job, one of the best places to work in Albuquerque, but just didn't know how to scale it up to the next level. And that's something that we show you how to do at Pilma. Well, you know, one of the things that's really important is I was, I was watching a video the other day of uh, Michael Phelps, right? The, Mike, the legendary Michael Phelps. And they tell a story about how his, his, his coach would do everything to rattle him before he competed. Like, you know, make, like rip off his, give him broken goggles. And uh, just to prepare him when stuff goes sideways because the perfect plans, everything always goes sideways. And it was his coach's idea to constantly do that. Well, then he gets in the Olympics, and what happens on his last race to break the record is his goggles get filled with water, and he had to race the entire race without the, with, with water in his goggles. Well, he'd done that dozens and dozens of times. And by being a part of like a, uh, your group, Pilma, and being a part of your mastermind where that collective wisdom is, uh, is hundreds of years of experience in one room, right. it's like having those kind of all those bad experiences well, people have already solved them. You don't have to solve them on your own. Yeah. Um, which, which is, you wrote this whole book about the mastermind effect. Yeah, yeah. You know, I believe in them so much. I've been in one myself, not legal, but just with entrepreneurs and different uh, coaches and things for the last, say, 20 years. Yeah. And I'm still in like two right now. Is that I, right? I yeah. believe in them. I, yeah. I know they have helped me grow Pilma. Yeah. They've helped me grow every business I've had. I, I've done better, quicker. Yeah. You know, because of other people who trailed that blaze that trail before me. Right. Yeah. Now you talk about there's about three different phases in a uh, firm's journey. Yeah, and, it, and it, it's not uh, absolute rule, but usually what I've found is over the years is that people like from zero to two million, lawyers are just trying to figure out, I need more cases, I need more cases, give me more cases. How can I get more cases? I need some cash flow. And then once they kind of figure it out and get some kind of system going, that's predictable and, and good results and a good ROI, then they go up to two to, to the $10 million and they still want to get more cases, but that's not the number one problem now. The number one problem is, is that now they've got to hire more staff, they got to figure out how to manage this thing, how to, how to keep it streamlined to where the margins don't get away from them instead of doing 35, 40% now they're down to 15%, although they're grossing more money they're not netting more yeah. because it can get away from you. And so at Pimmel, we work with people just like these that have had those same problems uh, about cash flow and how to keep your costs down and how to 
run a more well-oiled machine that gives you with accountability, with KPIs, with benchmarks, things, processes, procedures, so that everybody knows what your expectations are. You get the good client service because you get the case done, get it out the door, or get it to court. And that's what people want. Yeah. So in the, and then, well, there's one more category I want to pause there and just let make you, and then I'm going to come back to the first group, is that then the other group you work with are, are uh, firms doing over 10 million. Yeah, I and, got firms doing anywhere from 10 to 80 million right now. And what I see with them is they've really figured out how, they've got the machine working part of how to get cases. What they're looking for is that slight edge. They want to be on the, on the, on the cusp of whatever's breaking next. Like right as we do this, uh, offshore workers and AI, artificial intelligence. Yeah. So they're really grasping that, seeing how they can use that. You know, uh, but they're looking for that little thing. They're trying to keep, again, their margins. Yeah, small, uh, hi small hinges swing big doors. doors. Yeah, right. that's right. You know, and so we, we go <clears throat> deep into the seven levers of cash flow and how you can tweak this 1% or this 2% up or down, and it can make a 20% difference in your net income. Yeah. Which is big. Which right. you, you teach that to the first level as well, right? I teach it to all okay. Everybody. So let's go back to the first level, and I want to I want to press pause on the seven levers. So I actually want you to go in that little bit of, of just increasing cash flow and profit. But if I'm sitting there and watching this, and I'm in five hundred thousand, just under two million, and and I'm like, man, I'm brute forcing this. I'm working my tail off. I'm doing the hundred hour work week like you were. Um, where should my focal, where do you find is the number one, like if you're going to say focus here and here for that group to grow so they get over two million, so they have enough cash to start bringing on more uh, lawyers and, and support? Where would you tell them to focus? Well, if they've got their marketing fix, well, assuming they have it, they, they have it, or we're assuming they do. Let's well. assume they don't have it yet. Okay. They've been told, they've been told, hey, if you're just good, if you, if you just have yeah. a shingle up on your door, people are yeah. going to find you, yeah. be the path to your door, the old. Yeah broken mousetrap or the good, yeah, good mousetrap yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't know about you, they won't come. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think the biggest deal is I tell people to go after the low-hanging fruit. And okay. that would be like uh, Google reviews. 87% of people that hire a lawyer look at your reviews before they hire you, I promise yeah. you. Uh, the more you can <clears> get, <throat> the more they are, they need to be above 4.7. They don't have to be a 5.0. In fact, 5.0 looks like it's fake. Fake, yeah. You yeah. got all, if you got 5,000 yeah. five-star reviews, uh, that's not believable. Got Nobody's it. perfect, right? Just not, it's just not there. The second thing if, if was, is getting those, and that's going to put you on Google Maps. And you, you've got three spaces to be on Google Maps. And if you're not on there, when somebody does a search for a personal injury lawyer in your town, then you're not going to be seen. That's right. You're okay. not a real business. Yeah. So the second thing is really take this and then get on what we call local service ads, which is a pay per call. And there's a lot of rules on that. And I, that's what we teach in the masterminds and everything. Uh, I've seen we got lawyers that are very successful and I've seen lawyers that are very unsuccessful with this. But this could be a, a game changer. We've got a lawyer in Atlanta, Florida that signs up 40 PI cases a month doing nothing but LSAs and keeping his Google reviews up. Let's just say yeah. that again. So you have, a, you, have a, you have a client in Orlando doing 40 cases a month just doing the two strategies you just mentioned. Yep. Right? But so uh, he, he works it. He works it. Well, that's okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's Absol great. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, then the third thing would be go after your base or your people that already that you've serviced, your, your client base, your past client base. You, got, you ought to have a list. If you don't have a list, then you're hurting because the list of past clients or potential people that could be your clients is the most important thing you ever have. And like I said earlier, you want to put a fence around those yep. and you want to start sending them newsletters, email blasts, uh, birthday cards. You want to stay, I call it top of mind awareness because most lawyers, because of our egos, we think that everybody remembers even if we represent them. Uh, booze alert, that's not true. That is not true. So if you want to stay on the top of mind presence of those people and want to drill into them that you're their trusted legal advisor, then you got to keep contacting them at least six, seven, eight times a year with newsletters, yeah. different things, emails, 
birthday cards, Thanksgiving cards. Does whatever. does Pilma provide like the uh, templates and some of those resources oh, yeah. so that it's it's a little bit more turnkey instead yeah, of yeah 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 we, yeah. Do, we have a, a whole vault full of uh, social media and postcards for different holidays. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I think it was Disney that did the research on it that the number one reason why people leave a business is is not because of dissatisfaction but because of just um is it apathy like they just believe there's there's no there's no more feeling towards it whereas yeah. if you are on top if you're the only person especially I think nowadays sending the birthday card you're the only person doing it no one's very few people do it especially let alone an attorney right yeah. so let's move into the above two million um two to ten million we talked about you're growing fast you're growing yeah. you have cases coming in uh, revenue seems higher. Cash flow may be lower, though. Yeah. Do you mind discussing that a bit? Yeah, you can almost sometimes grow too fast. I had that problem because in the PI world, you don't get paid the day you sign a case up. You get paid anywhere from eight months to two years yeah. later, sometimes three or four years yeah. if it goes to court. So there is that cash crunch. <clears throat> it can really hurt you. Uh, so you have to watch, you've got to really be looking at your cash flow and, and there's certain levers about, you know, you've got to watch like seven different things that I don't have time today to go well, over. Just give us one or two if you don't okay. mind. Like one of them is very simple and this is like a, this is a golden nugget. <laughs> and you, most of you won't do it because you're scared. Raise your prices. If you're, ch unless you're in Florida, which is regulated, that's the only state in the, in the nation that's regulated. You can, if you're charging a third, go to 37%, go to 35%, go to 40%. If you're selling $10 million worth of cases, your fee is 33%, that's 3.3 million. If it's 40%, that's 4 million. How much more money is that? Yeah. $700,000. That's just, that's just the most simplest one. There's six others that are a little bit more complicated. I don't have the time to discuss today. But the other thing is you've got to get up, you've got to, you've got to memorialize your processes and procedures and systems because as you grow more cases you get more people yep. the more people you get the more complex it gets it's like and this is a very simplistic way to think about it when you got two kids playing in the yard it's pretty damn easy when you put the third one in there <laughs> it's so, chaos it's so true i mean that's, yeah. that's the truth yeah, it's so right? true yeah, yeah yeah so think yeah. about it that's the yeah. simplest way i can explain i don't know uh, so <laughs> you've got to have <laughs> rules you know, for these kids so you got to have systems, process, procedures, and you to be able to scale this because number one, you don't want to be held hostage by your key employees, and number two, you want to be able to onboard your new employees in a in a fashionable way to where they really understand what's going on. Yeah. And so that's very very important. And is that one of the, is it the tougher part for um, the founder of the firm, the leader of the firm? Is it is it more just a mindset shift of like? The same brute force and like the go like that got you here you almost need to switch that and curve that a little bit to be more um, to putting on a leadership cap and in and, and, and uh leading people instead of the first the first uh, zero to two million you might just be out of fear yeah, out of pure will making yeah. that happen yeah and it, that's the way it is most time just pure grit and determination you get to two million but then once you get up to like two i mean four five six eight nine ten million you got to have other people to help you, you yeah. just can't do it you know, you, you'll burn yourself out if you don't have a heart attack or stroke. Do you find that there's a certain point where you notice your clients are now taking more time off because they've taken the time to to build that team? Yeah, yeah. I got like I got a, I got a lot of people that take the whole summers off now because they've put in the management infrastructure, and now all they're doing is managing managers. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I got a lawyer. Uh, Every summer he takes the whole summer off and takes his kids and they go and his wife and they go abroad. And he says that's the most important time before they get too old where they don't want to be with him anymore, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's important to him, you know? So it's not all about making money, also about freedom and be able to do what you want to do because everybody's definition of success is different. Mine is doing what I want to do, when I want to do it with the people I want to do it that's with. That's right. You know right. what I'm saying? And I think that's that's a good one for me. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Well, I'll let you take this one the way you want to do it. So I, on my notes, I have uh, AI. I have acquisitions versus building uh, firms. I know you're a specialty in there. Why don't we cover that for just a moment? Like, why? I know one of the things you do teach your members is the strategy of acquiring 
as a as form of growth. Do you mind taking a minute or two and explaining yeah, why I that's? Yeah, I mean, if you really want to grow fast, the fastest way, look at what Amazon did, look at what Google does, look at what Microsoft does. They go out and gobble up smaller businesses. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to have the the cash and 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 the, and the borrowing power to do it. But if you're smart about it, now you got to be smart about it. Uh, but there's a lot, I think right now is one of the most opportune times ever for PI lawyers or any kind of lawyers because a lot of the lawyers are like me, they're hitting the, the they're baby boomers and they're hitting that, they're in their 60s yep. and they're looking at an exit strategy. Yep. And you know, if you can show them where they don't have just to walk away from it, that they can actually profit from it and you yep. can profit from it, then I think it's a good strategy. Not every time, not every firm is to be bought, but you ought to be looking because that's the fastest way to grow. Well, especially if you could, especially if you have your own case getting yeah. uh, money printing machine coming in and you see a, a, a firm that you, that doesn't have that, right. but they're profitable or they're big as it is and you stick that in there yeah. and you get instant profits on that. So let's talk about again, like, okay, so you have, you have three masterminds, one for uh, all through Pilma, which is you have it for the uh, firms doing over 10 million, you have them, for those doing two to 10 million, and then you have those who are under 2 million. Yeah. Do you mind talking briefly about like what, uh, what are you looking for in a, a, a candidate when they come to you? Because yeah. I know you don't take everybody. I don't. Yeah, and it's important that um, the, the whole concept of the mastermind first was introduced through Napoleon Hill. Yeah. Your book summarizes this perfectly. What I think you did perfectly in the book that was different, that most people miss out on masterminds today, because everybody says they have a mastermind nowadays. But the key idea was that the mastermind is for people to sit down or in a room, work on problems together so that each advance further uh, synergistically, not, not uh, versus being alone. Where so many coaching clubs or masterminds today is just one person in front of the audience solving everybody's problem all the time. And I know that's not what you do. So no, that's let's like, talk. That's like a master class. That's a master class, yeah. So um, sorry, I kind of rambled on that. But uh, do you mind sharing a little bit about? who's a great candidate yeah. and how do they know if they're perfect for yeah, Pilma? Yeah, yeah, and not everybody is. And sometimes I turn people down because uh, if I don't think they're a good fit, I mean, I want them to go, I'll take them to take that money and go do something else with it. That's right. I mean, yeah, because of, that, that's what I do. So I'm looking for somebody that's open-minded and willing to make changes and don't think they know it all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm also looking for somebody that's humble enough to know that, that uh, to be a, and, and free giving enough to be able to share what they do know because everybody's got something to give right yeah but you got to be you know willing to share willing to give uh humble enough to know that you you don't know it all and be willing to pivot and make changes yeah i think that's the big deal and, and not try to take over the deal you know be, be the only one heard you know listen as much as you speak yeah those type of things looking for good people yeah and I, and i would probably add in there too ken after spending so much time with you is you know, people who are committed to growing and being yep. a better version of themselves. Yep. And what I find out is like, you know, we went through this crazy thing called the pandemic is that so many people got stuck in this uh, constraints of what they can't do yep. and asking themselves question like, well, what if it doesn't work for me? Well, <laughs> that's like the most disempowering question you could ever ask. Yep. Cause my question would be like, well, what if it does work for you? Like, yep. and what's the worst thing that's gonna happen if you don't try it, you're just gonna get, you're just gonna be where you are anyway. That's right. So give yourself a shot. Um, um, yeah, so did you have anything further you wanna add on that? No, I think, I think you hit it. I mean, I'm looking for people that will implement because I don't want you to waste my time That's or right. your time. You know, you gotta be act, people that take action, do stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think one of the things too, we brought, we talked about investing different types of money um, is with the whole idea of like, well, I'm worried about my money and investing. Well, you don't have a money issue. You have a money and the amount of time issue. So if your practice is doing 1.2 million now, and you're like, I don't have any enough cash. Well, what if that 1.2 million became, happened in 90 days, right? What if, we, what if Ken and his team was able to compress that time frame? Next thing you know, you don't have a money issue anymore. You know, you're growing so fast. <laughs> you, need, you need support and mentors. Um, Fantastic. So, wh what would be the best way? I know you got uh, that someone can get a hold of you to see to pursue yeah. joining or seeing where they would fit in best yeah. 
with your coaching programs yeah. and mastermind programs. So they can go to in, uh, emails info at pilma.org. Okay, and info. Then, yep. At, and then the other way, uh, you can call 1 800 497 1890, or you can go on our website, uh, pilma.org. Yep. Any of those ways you can get up with me or somebody there that will help you. Okay, great, great. Yeah. And I know you have some free master classes coming up that people can learn from you. Oh, absolutely. And then we have some Ask Ken Any Things on, on uh, one Friday every month. Um, and then also, if you're really committed and want to be a part of the Pilma uh, Mastermind and, and be a part of Ken's group, um, you, you'll do 30 minute call with them yeah, absolutely. to listen and it's zero pressure. And Yeah, well, you can ask me anything you want. Plus, I'll sit there and help you. What's your biggest obstacle? I love to do that. I like to take whatever is your biggest obstacle and solve it for you. To, and I can do it in yeah. like 15 minutes. Yeah. Because I pretty much, if I hadn't been there, I've worked with thousands of lawyers that have been there. I've seen it. That's so right. They're, 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 very seldom do you ever stop me. Yeah. Just because, not because I'm so smart, because I've talked to so many people and seen so much. That's right. You know. That's right. Well, you know, I mean, before we part, I just got to say, like, I've always been a believer why I wanted to have you on the show and talk to you is because I think, like, if, if someone honestly says to themselves, like, look, I want to grow my, my firm. I want to do it. I want to take it to the next level. And if you actually honestly did an assessment of where you're spending money now and where you have money in, like, secured or insured bonds or whatever, insurance, whatever, and the options are keep it there or keep money in your savings account versus investing it in yourself and in your practice to get the slight edge, there is no possible way for you to fail unless it's just something you're not truly committed to doing. Yeah. And so I think that's more an internal question you got to answer yourself. But um, you heard it here. Go to pilma.org. Uh, if you'd like to book a call with Ken, you can. And, or email him at info at pilma, P-I-L-M-M-A dot org. And, uh, well, it was great having you on the show. You're Thank the best, you. buddy. Thank yeah, you, yeah, all right. I appreciate it. <laughs> you got it, okay. Thanks, everybody. Have an amazing day, and we look forward to seeing you here soon.